my back time loads of stuff here let's get into it don't forget there's always links down below for things i'll give you links for so if there's anything you see in this mailbag which interests you make sure you go follow those links to go and find out more information or perhaps buy some these i believe oh, i have to use a real knife for this i think these are salvaged modules rather the dirty salvaged modules these are some ocxos 10 megahertz ocxo from cti as you can see they've been salvaged from something they're a little bit messy but there's the model numbers and potentially dates. It's like maybe it's 2016, this is 2013 maybe. This information about these is online. And these are relatively cheap to get and they actually work quite well. I've had other ones in the past which I've tried out and have been okay. And 10 megahertz reference is always something which is handy to have around. You never quite know when you're going to get a piece of test gear which has got a problem and it's got some kind of fault. And maybe its main reference is bad and you need a 10 megahertz reference and if you're going to do that you might as well put in a good one. Oh, it's a bunch of ring terminals size of these. Let's have a read one. There's no markings on them. Uh, oh, there's a little bit just down there. It's manufacturer marking. That's about it. So I think there's are 8 millimeters, and I think they're for 2.5 more square cable. I think that's what they were. Or was it 1.5? I can't remember. I purchased a bunch of different ones recently. But I was, didn't really have anything with these large diameters. I'd used them all up. I was running low on them. So I'm working on my car like I could be doing you know, some kind of electrical work and you need to earth something out or add a ground reference to it um, you know it doesn't have to be insulated get some cheap ones they're fine all right a whole bunch of uh, <laughs> sim card ejection tools everyone should have some of these now you always need them you always lose them <laughs> so i bought a bunch of them and uh, my wife uses them more than i do to be honest when she goes overseas she swaps sim cards out so i'm going to give her a couple of these to take with her so the next time she does it she can do it more easily yeah, nothing too exciting about that. So my ring terminals look about the same size as the other ones, except these ones are insulated. I think they're about the same size. I think it's basically the same thing, just insulated this time. Just in case. You have to excuse my voice, I'm still getting over COVID. I had COVID, you know, I was feeling almost normal again, not quite, but you know, getting there. And then my wife got a cold and then she gave me the cold. So I've now been sick for three weeks non-stop. It's a, yeah, anyway. it's tiring. So that's it, excuse the voice. And here we have some more SIM card ejection tools. These ones have got little handles on them. These ones are a bit nicer. So style instead. I don't know which would be better. The cheap ones or these nice ones? I don't know. Which one's likely to lose first? Oh. <laughs> okay. Some more. I thought they put them in a bag. Normally the Chinese like to put things in bags or, or wrapped in cling film or, or whatever, but no, not this time. I need to find a bag to put these in. In fact, I probably don't need to. I'll probably put them straight into my parts units. 1614 is the mark test. But again, insulated ones because you never quite know if you might need insulated ones or not. And it looks like the same size as the others, just blue instead of red. Did I get carried away? Yeah, probably. I never do that. Okay, maybe sometimes I do. If it's your first time here, don't forget to subscribe. If there's anything here that catches your interest, get to the bigger packages as we go along. We always start the small ones first. So this is just a uh, mount for like a camera sort of thing. It's like a quarter inch and I don't know, is that... I don't know, is that 3 eighths, is it? I'm not quite sure what size that is. Yeah, it's just a clamp mount. I've got a few cameras around and mounts and stuff which I use for doing recording and I wanted to do something. I can't remember what it was now. There's something I wanted to do and I didn't have a clamp mount for it, I ran out, I'd use them all. So I've got one more. They fit on, you know, tubes and shelves and all sorts of stuff. Quite useful. Okay, it's an RF DC block. Basically 50 kilohertz to 8 gigahertz apparently. That's what it says anyway. Can you trust the claim on a sticker? I don't know, it's because dead straight. It's perfectly straight. It's well packaged. It looks nice enough. Is it a high quality one? Possibly. Was it cheap? Hell no. So these kinds of DC blocks, I recommend if you don't have one already, at least get some. This is for my spectrum analyzer, although I've got one on there already now. I've got a few different ones, but I picked up an assortment. And a lot of equipment doesn't like to have a DC injected back into them. Like a spectrum analyzer especially, we'd usually blow them up. 
or some other source of equipment don't like DC being injected into them. Often on the front panel they'll say maximum zero volt DC or something like that. And if you ever have anything which says zero volts DC, put a DC block on it. So if you do connect into a piece of equipment which may be faulty, don't assume it works properly. If you've got a faulty piece of equipment you plug it into and then just injecting DC back in, you could blow up your own test equipment and you don't want that. So get DC blocks. Highly recommend. You can get different styles. This is obviously an N-connector version. You can get BNCs, SMA, all different types. This one's almost open already, look. Capacitors, 100 microfarad, 35 volt. Somebody will be happy. Capacitors. It's a running joke. If you aren't familiar with that particular joke, you obviously haven't been around it at all. I'm known for having capacitors. Oh. We've got a multiple pack, even more mail. Start with this one. Alright, so these are some lens covers 37mm lens covers. Two of them. These are meant for Olympus cameras. My wife picked up an Olympus camera recently and she's been using that. You know, it's a bit of photography for things she does and for the events and stuff she goes to. And she wanted to take photos with a camera, and that's great, but the lens cap isn't attached and I can just see her losing it. So, I've got two lens caps. She will need them. I know she will need them. She always loses stuff. Don't tell her I said that, I'll get in trouble. Two different sides of wire, some thin stuff here. Slightly thicker stuff. Now this is stuff I use occasionally from time to time. You know, that's what occasionally means. <laughs> and uh, I was getting a bit low on it, so I thought I'd get some more. There's something I wanted to do, I think it was wiring up some lights or something like that, and I needed some cables to do it with, and I realised I basically only barely had enough to do what I needed to do. So, um, is it really copper? <sighs> probably. <laughs> it's probably copper. It said it was copper. Is it really? I don't know. It's. I don't have anything here to flame it with to actually test it, but uh, often what we get is you get a steel wire, which is coated in copper to make it look like copper, which will basically, when you try and bend it, it will just pop back again. It just keeps folding back. You can't bend it. You can't twist it because it just straightens back out again. That's steel wire. If you get aluminium wire, you can twist it and stuff. Hard to solder though. Watch out for that. You all sorts of dodgy stuff going on. Anyway. Ooh. It's an attenuator. Key press attenuator. Up to minus 60 dB. Insertion lost 1 dB. N type 5 watt. I saw these on AliExpress and I thought that looks interesting. They had different versions, they had like BNC types as well. So you go in and out. Although really it doesn't actually matter, I think it should it shouldn't matter which way around to go. And each switch will attenuate a certain amount. How good these are, I really don't know. So you've got 1, 2, 4, 8, 10, 10, 10, 16 dB. And you can get different ratios. Plus you put them all in, then you're going to get a 60 dB. I thought I'd get one because I didn't actually have any attenuators like this. I've got one now. Put that back in the box to potentially never use it ever again. But <laughs> there have been times I wished I had one, so it will get used. But it's only 5 watts, so you have to be careful about that. Still got a few big packages yet. They're getting bigger and bigger as we go. Ah, okay, I know what this is. Someone at work wants me to replace their phone screen for them. So this is a phone screen for an Oppo phone. I've never done an Oppo phone before, but I've got a whole assembly. It's a little bit involved getting it all apart, I think. You also have to glue it back together again. You have to glue the front back on. As usual, they come with a toolkit and stuff, which is nice, I suppose. I quite like these little spudgers and these little plastic ones. These ones work quite well for things, actually. Quite like them for all sorts of uses. But anyway, now the phone screen is turned up, I can replace this phone screen. It is a mess. It's completely smashed and it needs replacing. And he asked me if I could do it for him. I said, yeah, OK, I can look into it. And it did not too bad. A little bit involved, but not too bad. All right, a whole bunch of rubber keyboards. Four of them. I purchased this style before and I showed them previously in another mailbag. And it's just this sort of thing. All right, look like this. Been using one on one the piece of equipment we use at events. And it's been working absolutely fine. Placed a different type with that one. It's working nicely. So I've been quite happy with them. So I've got some more of this style. Because this particular one, this particular 
version. It's very slightly better than the previous one I had, which is all black. It was very slightly different construction. It was basically the same, but not exactly the same. And this is slightly better. They're really cheap. The advantage of these is that they are waterproof. Well, kind of. You know, you could get some through there, maybe, but they're kind of water resistant. And these are used outdoors, so they need to be water resistant. Last thing, I believe I've saved the best for last. We'll find out. Check this out. Original box. It's the original box. Showing some of it's covered up and stuff as labels, but anyway. Well packaged, pleased about that. Is there any documentation inside it? Well, unfortunately not. Pretty sure I found a manual for this online anyway. So I stumbled across this thing on eBay and I thought that looks interesting. It's basically a IEEE 488 analyzer and tester so you can actually inject signals and stuff like that onto a GPIB bus. Well it's came from the UK originally. <laughs> so that's it's a record Dana 488. Some information on the back there. Serial number. It's got a port there. It's got some kind of expansion port or something just here as well. Curious. And there's some other information just there. Bus interface stuff. Well, wow. see the manual? Yeah, well, I'll go through the manual. I just got this because it looked interesting. And I thought it could be useful. I've played with GPIB a little bit, obviously, with my test gear and stuff. I've, I've tinkered with it. I don't really use it that much. I mean, I do have a GPIB set up, but it's not something I've got into much yet. I, I, I really should do. I tend to be a bit slow with these things. GPIB's been around for a long time. <laughs> I'm just catching up, so this will be good for that. If I have problems with GPIB bus or analysing stuff and trying to figure out what's going on, this will actually give you a readout of what's going through the bus as well, apparently. So, um, yeah, you'll see the display on there. I'll probably do a video on this at some point in the future. Now, I believe it takes batteries. Let's have a look, see if there's anything in it. We'll see if there's a disaster waiting to happen. Through that insert thing. Oh, it's actually self tapping, but it's got a insert. And it does have batteries left inside it, and they are leaking. Let's get them out. This is why you don't need batteries and things. Hopefully, it hasn't gone very far. I didn't want to use the pull tab in case it uh, ripped or something. But yeah, this one is cleaning up now. Yeah, I might have to put it apart to clean this up properly. Don't leave batteries in things, people. Don't leave batteries in. So it was a shame I had to break these original calibration seals. Not like there's much calibration actually anyway, but these were the original seals. I had to break them out and sort that corrosion out. It's a bit of a shame. But oh well. It's better than leaving it. And I'm going to leave this with no batteries in it until I'm ready to actually try it out. When it'll be, I don't know. It'll be one day. Now together, hopefully good as new. So I hope you liked the mailbag video with this impromptu repair. Wasn't planning on repairing anything, but this is the sort of thing I do in my other videos. If you haven't seen those ones, I fix things. That's what I do. So maybe subscribe to see my other stuff. I don't know. Just a suggestion. It's up to you, obviously. Other videos down below. Subscribe over there, hint hint. Patreon support link over there if you want to help me to buy things to make videos about such as broken test gear to fix. Please do that. Catch you later.